This is such an amazing area to visit. Actually, the whole of Scotland is incredible, but right in Creef, you're really at the heart, so you've got access to so many different areas. It's really perfect. I'm actually half Scottish. This is my tartan. I stayed here about five years ago. So, you know, you see these videos on YouTube where you've got beginner versus pro. This for me, it's a little bit like going back into the past and I can compare myself, my old videos, I'm gonna hopefully find some of them on the old hard drive and then show you the difference between now and talk a little bit about my mindset, what's changed. So I'm gonna go back up to Nanok, which is one of the locations where when I was a drone beginner five years ago. Back then I was using Phantom 3, I didn't even use ND filters. So I've got ND32 on, the reason for doing this is you want the shutter speed to be double your frame rate. Okay, so one over 60. And also I'll talk a little bit about Scotland and where to visit, where to stay. I'm staying at the Creef Hydro Hotel. I'm not sponsored by them, but I'll show you guys around the hotel a little bit. So one of the main differences between when I started five years ago to now is I my first thought was always to go to a wide open space so I wasn't bothering people, send the drone up, send it up as high as possible so I wouldn't hit anything. And I see this on a lot of videos of YouTube, it's a mistake a lot of beginners make. They'll fly it out to a wide lake. They will also keep the edits, not have enough footage, not have enough locations. There's a phrase in filming called kill your babies and what that means is just film, film, film and then cut out the average shots. You want to film your the same location, especially where you're based, try filming that at different times of the day. You can take inspiration from the artist Monet. He'd visit the same spot 12 times on the same day and it's a really interesting exercise to do. With the video you can also create some cool transitions going from sunset to daytime, night to day. It's nice to have that flexibility. The other thing that I did differently now compared to five years ago was I would be looking for points of interest, not just go to the lock. I went to Loch Leven on the first day I was here and part of me was thinking, this feels like I'm creating an amateur video. Now one tip with this is go a bit further back so you at least get the context of the lock. You, you don't wanna be flying in the middle too much because then you just it's just water, a bit of mountains in the background, there's too much empty space. So if you are gonna do it, Go a bit further back and also have it in sport mode so you capture a bit more motion. Just as I was leaving this lock, I went on Google. There was a castle. I was so excited and then drove around a different area, Loch Leven. Now this castle, Mary Queen of Scots was imprisoned here. So you're there filming it and you've got the history and it's just such a good feeling. Just once you've got that point of interest, you can then go through your drone moves. So you can go through your orbits, your jib shots, your push-ins. It just gives you something more to react to. When you know you've got your drone moves and you've got this sort of checklist going on in your mind, you are limited sometimes when you're going out with how much batteries you've got. Another tip for you guys, I don't think three is enough for Scotland. There's that many points. You can capture some great shots off three batteries in a day, but I actually, when I come again, what I want to do is create a really epic video of going to different parts of Scotland. I'm gonna stay in Edinburgh for a week. Just bring it all together and have that just like amazing video all together. I think this video, I'm gonna create some sort of edit at the start and I think it'll be pretty good. I've captured some good shots, but I know there's way more places I can explore. I can do much better and work on it, push it in the future. Another mistake I would make when I was a beginner was I would leave the drone shots for too long. As a general rule, I would limit it to two seconds maximum per drone clip. Unless there's something really special happening like a backwards reveal, now and again it's, it's okay to leave it longer or if it really fits in with that music. Sometimes at the start having that suspense can be really nice. But just generally, two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. Sometimes even faster if the music is a fast cut. That's a really important thing to just have as, as a basis when you're creating your edits. Also regarding choosing the music, I used to make the mistake of rushing choosing the music. I think it's a lot better to have that as like a separate exercise. So whichever library you're using, I'll now spend a couple of hours just, I'll be chilled out, you know, I'm not gonna be there like editing like a crazy person, but be chilled out, listen to selection, put, that to one side and then narrow that down. And then when you've got your footage out of that narrowing down process, then look at your top four options. Then, okay, this one or this one, 
that narrowing down process rather than panicking, doing, getting footage together and then finding the music. I think it's a much better, more time efficient way as well because you might be looking through something, ah, that's really cinematic. And then, ah, this is, goes with the Scottish vibe. So I've been having some fun today with the new firmware update of having the, it's not called the tripod mode, but it allows you to really slow down the footage. So I'm really excited to try that in different areas. You know, when you're at a waterfall, it's just a lot nicer to be able to have that control. You can go full throttle on the stick and it's still gonna move slowly because you've slowed it down the settings. That's a lot better than just having these sort of tentative motions because then you don't get the consistency. And I know this is something that Philip Bloom has been working hard, pushing DJI, bring back the tripod mode. And DJI, if ever you're listening to this, you've got to think about the long term here. When you release the Mini 4 Pro, whatever it's called, people might cotton onto this and be, okay, I'm gonna chill with the Mini 3 Pro now because it's gonna take you another year to release tripod mode. I'm good with what I've got. People are gonna learn this. It's like the boy that cried wolf. So if you want people to go out and buy it on launch day, then don't make people wait a whole year for these features. Give it to us when the drone's released. I know there might be bugs and I know there might be firmware updates that are necessary, but I do think the controlling the speed of the drone and the sharpness, that's something that just should come when the drone's released. Just my opinion, what do you guys think about this? Creef is really close, it's only a 15 minute drive to Comrie, which was amazing. I went there two days actually. So yesterday I saw this church and it was beautiful, but the weather was very dicey and it was lightly raining. So I was in one of those situations, do I set my drone off, do I risk it? I had that little window where the, it was very, very light rain. So I said, right, I'm just gonna do a very quick shot. Sent the drone up. And you know what, when the drone came back, there was hardly any rain on it. So the propellers do a really good job. I don't recommend flying in the rain because you've got expensive equipment. And what if it get damaged? Then you're gonna be gutted throughout the rest of your trip and not have a drone to work with unless you've got a spare. So I really don't recommend flying in the rain, but I have seen some tests on YouTube where guys have gone out and tried it. So that gives you a little bit of a, okay, maybe it starts raining while your drone's up there you have got a little bit of chance to bring it back then go dry it off afterwards and sometimes when you're away you think to yourself i'm never going to get the chance to necessarily be here again i really need to try this capture this and then quickly bring your drone back then get back home so yeah you've got the the church the white church the, i think it's called the white community church in conway really nice spot very good very easy takeoff and landing spot as well there there was the Melville Monument, which was a beautiful, beautiful location, wonderful mountains in the background. I was testing out both using normal mode and also really slowing down the, the settings with the new update with this. I think I prefer the normal mode because I think with your orbits, you, you wanna have some, a bit, some fairly fast motions, but it is handy to have that. The closer you get to a tower, especially when you're doing vertical video, it can be too fast in normal mode. So having that slowed down version it is really handy. And then I went to this ex-prisoner of war camp, which was incredible. I'd love to have had a whole day there really. There's so many interesting little places, little nooks and crannies to explore. And they were drone friendly as well, which is amazing. Because you're in this enclosed area, you get there and think, can I set my drone off? Is there gonna be a no drone sign? But I went to one of the organizers and he was absolutely fine. He was like, go for it, lad. We have these people come over all the time. They're flying the racing drones around. If ever you guys visit Creef, you must visit the Drummond Arms Hotel because this is the location where Bonnie Prince Charlie had his last war meeting before the Battle of Culloden. The history just kind of hits you. Unfortunately, it has been neglected, so you can't go in there and have a drink, but there is talk of it being regenerated, so fingers crossed for that, but it's protected. So even though the owner has neglected it, it can't be taken down because it's of historical significance. So it's right in the center of Creef. It's definitely worth looking at, take some shots. Also let me know guys in the comments, like do you have Scottish ancestry? Are you planning on visiting Scotland? It is honestly one of the best places in the world to bring your drone. Quick little tip, the charity shops are amazing in Scotland. So I actually, like an absolute moron, forgot to bring my tripod. I'd been doing some still photography and I was going from one to another and my bag was getting messed up and I left one of the most important 
bits of equipment behind and I felt like such an amateur in the car. But 10 pound, I, so I went into two different charity shops. They both had decent tripods. I got the Hammer 61, which is a pretty good one. It's not amazing, but it's lightweight. It's great to travel with. So maybe you're traveling from America to Scotland. It might work out more economical for you to just pick up one of these charity shops tripods when you're here, hand it back to the charity shop as you're leaving. That might be cheaper than having the extra luggage. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. And obviously the theme of this video has really been planning a trip and the improvement. But I do think the drone moves you have are very important. Having that checklist at the back of your mind. I do my orbit shot, I do my jib shot. I've done a separate video with my favorite drone moves I'll leave that video here and I'll see you guys there.